Hello, welcome to Web of Stories. My name is Melinda, and I am back with a monster with a very, very big, monstrously big book haul again for May. Now, I have, you know, if you've watched my videos, you know I'm doing this no-buy thing where I decide each week if I'm going to buy something or if it's gonna be a no-buy week. I've had two no-buy weeks in a row, which has been great. This coming week I am going to allow myself to make do my book of the month selection, but that's it. Um so you're saying, but if you're doing no buy, why do you have such a big book haul? Because this all happened before I started going no buy. <laughs> a lot of these are um, pre-orders or books that have been back on back order and came in. Uh, so first of all, I have a question for you because I'm thinking about setting a goal for myself. Like if I successfully go X number of no buy weeks, I want to give myself some kind of reward. Now, my immediate thought, which I give my reward, is a book, and that seems kind of silly. Um, so if anybody has an idea for like a non-book but still bookish reward for me, let me know. Second of all, I didn't plan this well, and I had actually already shelved a bunch of the books that I purchased for this month upstairs. Um, so I am just going to physically show you the books that I had easy access to downstairs, and I'll put pictures up of the other ones. So... Let's get started. Um, I'm gonna start with a book that's not counting towards my TBR because I read it this month and one that I am currently reading. So the one that I purchased and read this month, so it's not gonna count towards my TBR, is James by Purcell Everett. I say this is the, the most unsurprising five-star book ever. Loved it, um, highly recommend it. It's I'm someone who doesn't like Huck Finn. I read that recently and I didn't like it. Um, but I did really love this because it addressed a lot of the things that I found problematic with Huck Finn. Um, I don't want to, I don't need to say too much about this book because everybody's talking about it. So James. And the other one that I am currently reading is a book of poetry, which is Wislava Simborska. I think that's how you say her name. Um, she's a Nobel Prize winner for literature. Um, and this is Poems New and Selected. So I'm just kind of like picking up, putting it down sort of thing going on with this. But um, I heard about this from Mariandria at Books and Bocadillos. She read one of her poems and I thought it was great. So I bought the book because I have no self-control. Okay. Now, um, I don't, a book that I don't have here, but I wanted to share um, because I got it at Powell's the same time I bought James and that's a can, a uh, Mechanical for Leibowitz by Walter M. Miller Jr. So that was part of the indie press list uh, for the Currently Reading podcast this month. And normally I would buy it from that bookstore, which was Commonplace Books. However, on that one, and I've, I've, I've mentioned this before, so you may have already heard this, um, on, the per, on the indie press list episode, which is for their patrons, um, they said it's only available in mass market paperback. And I hate mass market paperback because... The A, they're just not comfortable to hold, and B, the print tends to be super small. Um, so I, I didn't buy that as part of my order from that bookstore. But um, I did, when I was at Powell's, decide I just wanna go look and see like how small the print is for the mass market paperback. And it is small, but they had a trade paperback. <laughs> so I bought the trade paperback version of that there, and it's already shelved upstairs. The two other books that I got from the Indie Press list um, that I did actually get from Commonplace Books. The first one is called I Keep My Worries in My Teeth, a novel by Anna Cox. Cox excuse me, this is not very long. Um, and it's it, it deals with anxiety. I thought maybe I'd fit it in for Mental Health May, but clearly that did not happen. So it's going on my shelf. I'll get to it when I get to it, but this sounded really interesting. The other book was one that I do not have down here, and that is The Turtle House by Amanda Churchill, which is historical fiction. It's based on the author's grandmother who was a war bride from Japan after World War II. So those two came from commonplace books. Okay, so I forgot to turn my volume on on my computer, sorry. The next thing is my book of the month selections for this month. Again, both are upstairs. The first one was a book called Middle Tide by Sarah Crouch. This is, I believe, a debut. Um, it just sounded interesting, so I picked it as my choice for this month. Um, I don't know much about it. It's not very long. I hope to get to it soon. 
And the second one I got was The Demon of Unrest by Eric Larson. So I have read Devil in the White City and I have at least one of his other books to read, but I do enjoy his writing quite a bit. Um, and this one just sounded interesting and I chose it as an add-on for Book of the Month and it is upstairs. Maybe I'll read it in nonfiction November. We'll see. Now I have some books that came from Birch Bark Books in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Uh, whenever I order a Louise Erdrich book, I always order it from there. That's her bookstore. And then you get the book signed or with a plate that has her signature on it that you can add. Um, I went there to get one specific book and I ended up buying five. And four of them came. And guess which one isn't there? <laughs> the one... It's a pre-order. It's her next book, which is coming out in October. So I wasn't expecting to get that one, but I did get four other books. Um, oh, I left one over there, but I'll just have to tell you about it. The first one was Heartberries by Therese Marie Malo, Mayo, Malo, which I will be reading soon with Sarah Roadworthy as part of our little project of reading indigenous authors from the Pacific Northwest. And the other three that I have are all by Louise Erdrich. The only one I have here because it got lost in a pile and didn't make it upstairs was the Bingo Palace, and it has, where is it? The signature on there. <laughs> so the Bingo Palace, and then I also got uh, Love Medicine, which I don't think I've read. If I read it, it was a long time ago. I have read The Roundhouse, which is sort of, sort of a sequel to it, um, but I don't remember reading Love Medicine, but I might have. I don't know, but I got that. Um, and then I also got her collection of short stories called The Red Convertible, which I actually am currently reading. However, it has a lot of stories in it, so I am going to be currently reading it for a very long time. <laughs> now I have two library Friends of the Library bookstore or bookstore-related purchases. The first one is the one that I bought the day after I said I was going no buy. So that's when I had to rethink going no buy. <laughs> And realizing that saying I'm, I'm not going to buy any books for the summer, it just wasn't working. So I only do it week by week. And that is The Fervor by Alma Katsu. This is a book that's been on my TBR for a long time and they had a copy of it. So I bought it without even thinking. I do plan to read it. Um, I don't see really any harm in doing that. It's just, I said I wasn't going to buy any books. And I, then I did. And the second book I got was... Um, Country, the Country Girls by Edna O'Brien. So um, the reason this is sort of book library, book sale adjacent is that I had purchased her second book in that trilogy, not knowing that it was a trilogy. I forgot the title of it um, at the library book sale. And then I needed to find the first one. I've talked about this too. Um, I find it's not in print in the United States. So I had to look for it. I found it on thrift books for $28. And uh, I was like, okay, this is my chance to get it. So I paid the $28. And when I received it, uh, you know, I wasn't expecting it to be in pristine condition because it said it was in like acceptable condition. So condition-wise, it wasn't an issue. But when I opened it, there was a book crossing label, which is, um, I've got some right here. You can put these in books and it's a, you get a book ID and you can put it on there. And then like, if you leave it in a little free library, somebody gets it and they can go into book crossing and log it and say where they found it. Um, so I thought, well, that's strange. And then I went and I looked it up and uh, this book came from a little free library and I paid $28 for it. <laughs> um, it will be going back to a little free library because yeah, even though I've, I paid a lot of money for this book that is not worth, I mean, really just isn't worth that much. Um, as far as this trilogy goes, I have the first two books and I've decided now that I'm just going to release those when, after I read them, I'm going to release those books into little free libraries. And then when I get to the third book, I'll buy the three book bind up and use that as a keeper book. So yeah. <laughs> okay. Now I have some books that came from Blackwell's in the UK. Very much like my little online trip to Birch Bark, I went for one book and I came back with six. So the book I went to get was The Innocent Angels by Alison Belsham. So this is the third book in a series. I had read the first two last summer and really enjoyed them. It's, they're just, it's a British crime novel. I mean, it's, it's not anything super unique, but it's just, I thought it was a well-done British crime novel that really kept my attention and I really wanted to keep reading in the series. Not available in the U.S., so I had to go to Blackwell's. And while I was there, I apparently decided to treat myself to five more books. So the first one I got was, uh, this is one of the British Crime Library classics. Um, this is Death of a Bookseller by Bernard G. J. Farmer. 
Somewhere someone said I should read this and I don't remember where or who or what, but I have it. So now I can read it. <laughs> and then I decided to, to basically go down the historical mystery rabbit hole. So the first one was a very intentional purchase and that was Disillusion by C.J. Sampson. This is the first in the uh, Sheldra Shard Lake, excuse me, Shard Lake series. Um, Susie Edge, who's uh, she's an author. She wrote Mortal Monarchs, which I've loved. Um, she's very active on TikTok and Instagram. She had said she was going to read this. And I thought, oh, that looks like a good book. So I got it. Um, I did not know at the time that it, the first one at least, has been turned into a Disney Plus TV show. So I will read this and then I will watch the show. Um, and this is set uh, during the reign of Henry VIII. Then I got, and these were all, the next three are all complete impulse buys. The next one I have is Martyr by uh, Rory Clements. And this is set during the reign of Elizabeth I. Another mystery. And then I have England, 1385, a country in turmoil, a king marked out for murder, a burnable book by Bruce Holsinger. I actually have a book by Bruce Holsinger, which is, um, I, it was a book of the month book, which I, I think was like the gifted school or something. It's on my shelf. I haven't read it, but this looked good. So I got it because you no know, self-control. And then finally, um, this is the first in the Brad Bradicote and Catchpole series. And that is Servant of Death by Sarah Hawkswood. And this is set in 1143 in England. So a bunch of historical murder. Now I'm going to go through just the books that I got from book from bookshop.org for various reasons. The first book I got was um, Catherine of Aragon by Alice, or the first queen, the true queen, Catherine of Aragon by Alison Weir. Um, so I, for Historathon, read Queens of the Conquest by Alison Weir. I didn't know that she wrote nonfiction and it was great. So I thought I'm going to try some of her fiction. So I got this. My library has it. I don't know why I didn't just check it out from my library, but I bought it. So it's on my shelf now. The next book from bookshop.org was a pre-order um, and it is... Long Island by Colm Toy, Toy Bean. Just this past March, I finally read Brooklyn. I mean, I had owned it for 10 years when I read it and I loved it. And this is the sequel. So I want to read it, even though Oprah, Oprah got involved. And yes, thank you for, I, Angela and someone else said hair dryer. We'll get this off. So I will try to get that sticker off because I don't need Oprah's approval. After that comes my copy of Love's Labor's Lost by William Shakespeare. That is my Shakespeare play for June. So I didn't previously own a copy of it. And I am getting the Folgers Library copies all in trade paperback size. Um, so they all match. <laughs> so I did have to go ahead and order that one. I have not started it yet. I know nothing about this play other than it's a comedy. So that should be fun. Then I have... Um, I actually have two essay collections that came up next. Again, they're both upstairs. Uh, I saw these on Lillian from Paperback Stacks channel. Um, the first one, which I am actually currently reading, is Upstream by Essays by Mary Oliver. It's, it's lovely. It is a lovely essay co uh, collection, lots of nature writing. I mean, it's Mary Oliver. Of course, it's going to be lovely nature writing. It's just not, it's just in prose instead of poetry. <laughs> But I'm enjoying it. It's a great essay collection. The essays are not too long in it. And the second one I had heard about, but Lillian reminded me of it. And that is, this is not a book about Benedict Cumberbatch by Tabitha Carman, which is a, an essay collection about women just having a passion for something. The author's passion is Benedict Cumberbatch, but yours could be anything. Um, and I had been intrigued by that. And then I forgot about the book. And then she mentioned it again. I'm like, ooh, I want to read that. So I purchased it. And I don't feel, I don't feel bad about the essay collection purchases because like social, but like short story collections, I feel like I need to purchase those because they do take me longer to get through. Not as long as short story collections because I always have three short story collections going as a rotation. Um, and I'm just, I'm reading one essay collection at a time, but it still, it still takes me a little bit longer. So I don't feel bad about purchasing essay collections. And then I got a book that was a pre-order and I am very excited to read it. I just need to read it. And that, um, and it's actually not technically released yet. It was one of those cases where Bookshop just sent me a book early. And that is The Queen of Poisons by Robert Thorogood. It is the third, uh, third entry in the uh, Marlowe Murder Club series, which I've really enjoyed. Um, Marlowe Murder Club and the Thursday Night Murder Club get put together a lot 
for some pretty obvious reasons, but they are they are different enough. I actually prefer the Marlow Murder Club to the Thursday Night Murder Club, but I enjoy them both. Um, but yeah, I'm excited to read that one. Then I have another poetry collection, and this is Only As the Day is Long by Dorian Lau. Um, I heard about this poet from Pat at Book Chat with Pat, um, and she read a poem from it. And while she was, before she read the poem, she always does a little biographical thing about it. Um, this author used to teach creative writing. Um, she currently teaches creative writing at North Carolina State University. Um, but she was a founding faculty member of the MFA program at Pacific University. Pacific University is literally down the road from me. <laughs> It is just the next town over. So I was like, ooh, I want to read that. Um, and she was a finalist for the Pulitzer. So I haven't started this one yet. I will probably start it after I finish my other short story collection. But there you go. Um, just kind of, I, I think, just kind of thumbing through this, I think I will really like these poems. Okay, now I have a, I call it a brain fart moment. So when I was getting ready for Historathon, for a second quarter of Historathon, I decided I really wanted to read a book about Emma of Normandy, who is a really interesting character. She was the wife of, of Edward the Confessor and Hartha Knut, or Knut. Um, oh boy, she, she had a colorful life. I, why there aren't movies about her, I don't know. So I had to go looking for one. And in doing that, I also found the Alison Weir book, Queens of the Conquest, which talked about uh, Matilda of Flanders and Maud called Matilda but they call her Maud because there's already a Matilda and then another Matilda. Yeah, um, they're all called Matilda in that book. But I was like, okay, well, I'll read this and I'll read about Emma of Normandy. So my Emma of Normandy book came and it's Matilda. <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking, thinking this was Emma of Normandy. I mean, the book is called Matilda. <laughs> I don't know what I was, I was so excited. I'm like, finally get my Emma of Normandy book. And then this shows up. And I don't know what I was thinking when I ordered this. Not that I don't want to read this book. That's nothing against the book. It's just, clearly this is not about Emma of Normandy. Um, I am going to save it for Historathon next year, though, because I've already read about Matilda this year. Um, this is, uh, Matilda was, who's also Maud, in the Alison Weir book, she was referred to as Maud because there's already too many Matildas. Um, she is the daughter of Henry II. Henry II's, his only he had a, he had a son, but then the son like got in a drunk boating accident. <laughs> it's a whole thing. Um, so he didn't have a male heir, and he wanted, you know, he stipulated he wanted Matilda to become queen, and then um, another nobleman named Stephen kind of usurped it. But she was already the Holy Roman Empress, and it was a thing. It was a whole thing. Um, it's a very interesting thing. It's great. It's wonderful. It's not Emma of Normandy, which is also great and wonderful. And that's what I was looking for. But I will revisit Matilda next year. And now we're to my last book, which was a pre-order, which came in. And this is a memoir. Um, this is a, sort of an example of why I'm doing no buy, because I don't know why I ordered this. And there's nothing wrong. I'm excited to read it. It's, it's not that. It's just I, I, I want to get to the point where we're, I'm buying a book. I'm buying it for a specific reason. For example, I specifically purchased The Queen of Poisons because I want that book. I want that book to go with the other two books, which are already on my shelf. <laughs> and I know I will like that book. I purchased those essay collections because I want to purchase essay collections. That was very intentional. This is not an intentional purchase on my part. <laughs> so this is why I'm going nobody. But it's probably great. We'll see when I get to it. Um, it's called The Story Game by Shui Hui Chajoy, I, there, by that person. <laughs> I'll read a little bit of the back. In the humid dark of a eucalyptus scented room, a woman named Hui lies on a mattress telling stories about herself to her listener, a little girl. She talks about her identity as the child of an immigrant, her feelings about being in a mixed race marriage, her opinions on mental health. But as her stories progress, it becomes clear a volatile secret lurks beneath their surface. There are events in Hui's past that have great significance for the person she's become, but that have gone missing from her memory. What is it exactly that is haunting Hui? Who is the little girl she talks to? And who is Hui herself? I mean, that sounds interesting. I'm excited to read it, but I, why did I buy it? I, I don't know. I don't know. Um, there you go. I have it, though. I will read it. It's, it's on... You know, it takes a long time to get these books because I do this. So anyway, those are the 20, 
27, 27 books that I purchased, 26 of which are on my TBR. Um, hopefully June, it will be much smaller. As I said, there are times when I will allow myself to buy a book. I am allowing myself to make a book of month selection. If there's something on the indie press list that I want, I will get that. Um, I may have to purchase a Shakespeare play, but I'm really trying to keep it kind of limited because the truth of the matter is any book that's coming out at this point, like future, I've already pre-ordered, but there are pre-orders coming in, in, in June. Um, but I've already pre-ordered the book. So I don't need to purchase anything more at this point. Um, so very good. We'll, we'll see how this works. I'm doing the best I can. I should probably answer a question that like three people have literally asked me. Powell's, my local indie, because, well, mine is the Cedar Hills Powell's, which is not the downtown Powell's, but whatever. So Powell's is my local indie, is having a warehouse sale. Am I going? No, 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 I'm not going. Um, I That would be too dangerous. <laughs> I, of course, I, it's unfortunate that this warehouse sale is happening now, but I'm not going to go. I'm going to be strong and not go. If you are in my area and you go to the warehouse sale, I'd love to hear about um, the deals that you got. I would love to hear about them after the sale is over, so I'm not tempted, but you know, that's how it goes. Anyway, um, yeah, it's not as bad as uh, May, uh, April's was, so that's a good thing, um, but I'm hoping June's will be much smaller. Anyway, there you go. There's my book haul. Like, subscribe, join my Discord. Help me stay accountable to my no buy. As I said, I did two weeks of no buy successfully. And this coming week, well, my weeks run Saturday to Friday. So either this week or next week, depending on when Book of the Month releases its books, I'm going to allow myself to make a selection, but that's it. Um, yeah, that's what's going on. Anyway, thanks so much. Um, send help. <laughs> like, subscribe, join my Discord, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.